and welcome to Once More With Feeling, The Puzzle and Snuggles Part 2. This time looking at Snuggles. Now this album is in diametric opposition to the vibes from the puzzle, being the calm to face against the chaos that the puzzle presented. It's designed to be the sort of album that you would come home to after a hard day's work to just relax to and act as a warm comforting blanket to wrap around yourself and it definitely feels that way. It draws upon a lot of the sounds of albums like Ghost and elements of Casualties of Cool and to a lesser extent Hummer insofar as it has a much more through line in the sound. It's pretty much one contiguous song that just touches upon different concepts of what it is like to relax. Uh, personnel on this album is much smaller, well I say much smaller, it's two-thirds of the size of the previous album being 27 as opposed to 44, not including Devon. Uh, the returning musicians are Shayami Dorval and Morgan Agren on uh, backup vocals and drums respectively. Uh, this is a much shorter one than previously, probably by design, so as to round out the whole concept of being a relaxing album to come home to and not worry about more complex musical concepts and narratives and just to let yourself float with the music for a time. As such, let's get straight to it. <laughs> So first is Beyond Measure. We open with a calm, soothing soundscape. There's an almost cloud-like feeling to this and a guided meditation vibe. Pleasant synths intermingled with piano trills, giving a nice, welcoming sense to it. At the very start is a charming chuckle and whisper that helps to give this sense of just having a relaxing time at home with a loved one, sharing sweet nothings that you might have been looking forward to all day. You really get this sense of we're starting as we mean to continue in just relaxing. And it easily moves on, in fact, almost imperceptibly, to... Blue Dot. One of the few fully vocalised songs on the album. Blue Dot is a warm fireside sit with your favourite person on a rainy autumn day. It slowly layers in a very pleasant, dreamlike manner, each new instrument feeling like a happy memory coming in to say hello. Soft samples of rain and wind chimes flow through the song. A nice gentle snare and cymbal play accompanies soft guitars granting this sense of warmth and comfort, and flutes permeate near the end to give a sense of calm after the rain, and really helps to draw you down into this feeling of nicely drifting off and leading into the next song, appropriately titled Drifting and Dreaming. This wraps around you and feels like you're sailing down a river. Once again layering as though to mimic different visuals, 
such as the passing of clouds or the drops of rain off of leaves. The opening is as unto the last bits of tension leaving your body, having a much sterner sound and tone and giving way to the softer, lighter pianos and flutes heard throughout the rest of the song and the rest of the record, in fact. You could almost see this as a direct response to Kittenhead. For as nightmarish and chaotic as that was, this is a peaceful, happy experience. A dream that you can wake up from feeling content. Guitar work has been sprinkled about here and there in an almost psychedelic manner, and an overall sense of calm and well-being is evoked. Which makes it flow very nicely into the next song, which very nicely makes it flow into the next song, Sundance. This is essentially a song designed to mimic the feeling of waking up after a nice restful night, with synths used to mimic the sounds of birds, and guitar work is as unto a shining sun into your room. There is a cycling meditative refrain halfway through, as though to emulate the feeling of waking up after a restful night, and once again flows very nicely through this, this whole, I suppose at this point it's important to note, you almost don't ever notice the change in songs until about halfway through each of them and that's not actually to the record's detriment it actually builds what the overall message of it is that it's for you to relax and just go with the flow and just take a moment to chill you don't have to overanalyze them which is ironic for this episode but this is my job so here we are but yes after that, we have... Minds are changing. This has a very swirling, more ethereal sound, with layered chants to evoke the sense of people's changing thoughts and perspectives. For a great deal of it, it utilises a mixture of synths keyboards and chimes with odd tonal interjections of guitars to essentially reflect Devin's personal experiences with the various instruments he's either employed personally or has asked other musicians to play. There's a gentle cycling chant that flows from this into the next song very naturally, which leads us to... The Ocean. One of the bigger sounds on this record, the ocean has the feeling of vastness and waves coming over you, flowing into many different waterways and tributaries, each having their own unique existences, and then flowing back together, much as the ocean does. Initially, it just has a gradual layering of keys and then builds and swells. Introducing in a gradual manner guitars, but always maintains this sense of ease as though just riding the waves instead of fighting them. The lilting flutes and layering synths mixed in with an almost angelic chorus do an excellent job of conveying this sense of vastness and the idea of how full of life the ocean is, 
whilst also providing this feeling of pleasant wonder and calm exploration. You almost imagine it's like someone going coral reef diving, something like that. Just taking their time to take it all in and recognising how those sorts of experiences can really give this easing sense of perspective. And it very nicely flows into the next song. Distant Elegant. This is gazing upon the beauty and wonder of nature and appreciating all of it whilst maintaining a welcome and comfortable distance and applying that to everything around. There is a massive swelling of the vocals in tandem with the synths as though whilst they are separated distantly, they acknowledge and appreciate and recognise each other. It eventually gives way to more downplayed pianos and flutes and almost whispered vocals, having the sense of someone that just gracefully dancing back from this grand experience. And once they have danced back, potentially with the loved one who has been accompanying them this whole time, we flow into Replicus. Once again we get to a more meditative piece with a rhythmic repetitive chant running throughout whilst a wave of sound slowly washes over you, gradually easing you out near the end. There is again a build and swell as though becoming a one with your thoughts making peace with them and clearing your mind for what is to come. This feels very much like almost the key concept behind the overall governing of the record, this whole idea of something that eases you out of the work state, out of the hard days existence, everything like that and just gets you to feeling at home. This overall record has been like that, but this feels like it encapsulates that concept the most. And from there flows into... I agree. This is a conversation between two people who are perfectly comfortable with each other, each asking the other what's on their mind and the other responding. It has a much more standard instrumentation for a lot of it, being a much more guitar and violin driven piece, which in turn helps to feed this idea that it is a conversation between two different but ultimately loving and understanding partners, because there is still the synths and keyboard work going on. As opposed to a playoff, it's an agreement between the instruments and they're taking their turns, sort of asking questions, answering and talking about what's on their mind, or that sort of thing. The way it winds out is almost like the more concerning aspects of a conversation being raised, 
and then calmly talked through. From what I know, from what Devin has said about his familial relationships and all that sort of thing, this song feels like it's very much reflective of his home life and everything that um, he's personally able to sort out because of how that is. That's probably why the next song feels like it very perfectly flows on from there and why my reading of it is like. Trist. The conversation has become sex, but not the raw animalistic sex that so many songs are about, nor the nervous first time sex. This is the comfortable, perfectly whole with the person you're with, and everything is just right kind of sex. To the point where it almost feels like your existence is being expanded through it. Musically, it is more of a return to the synth-driven, more soundscape style, with interjections of piano and guitar to round out the sound, and really emphasise this sense of comfort, belonging and togetherness. And very nicely flows into the next song. Second bridge song of the album, and also the penultimate song on the album. Uh, Sunset Rump is the warm, happy afterglow when you've made love to someone who truly understands you. Not much to really go into for this one. It's just a very effective wind out from the previous song and into the last one. The option. Finally, we end with this piece of essentially guided meditation. It utilizes similar concepts to the puzzle in discoordination, but unlike that situation, in this case the instrumentation is to encourage the idea of just playing around. Not worrying about having a full idea in mind and simply seeing where noodling around could take you. And it's okay if that's nowhere at all. All manner of instrumentation has been used for this song including various vocal effects heard earlier on the record. For example, you have, during the ocean, the refrain of it's the ocean, but in this case, it's the option. There's guitars, pianos, synths, violins, and a building swell all bleeding through to give you this very expertly guided means of rounding out the album and this whole project as a whole. The whole project as a whole. I do words good. It essentially has this vibe of, if you're a musician at home, feel free to join in, see what sounds you could add to this song. Give yourself an idea of what you can create if you've got this unbridled feeling of 
absolute relaxation and calm. It's the perfect way to round out this album and this whole media exploration and definitely has you going, yeah, I'm at peace. Snuggles is certainly indicative of Devin's overall desire to make the world better and make people's lives easier and less stressful. Even if that is just for a brief time, even if it's just saying, hey, I know you're going through some stuff right now, but here's just a little corner of peace that you can take solace in. You don't have to worry about anything else. You can just sit and be. And overall, this definitely feels like a great companion piece to the puzzle. Effectively having the paradigm of thesis, antithesis and synthesis. Their discussions both with each other and the audience and as such work well both on their own and together. And once again, I have to give Snuggles a 5 out of 5. I have to say, I wasn't sure how my listening experience to these albums was going to go after what I was, had read, but I am thoroughly pleased and I am eagerly looking forward to when Lightwork comes out. That's it for this episode. Next time I will be looking at Caleb Hiles' debut album. Catch you next time! Hello and welcome to Once More with... We're off to a great start.